The Agenda is powered by DART, Delaware's transit service, moving forward. to the agenda. This is Kerwin Gaines, your host, and I'm so happy that you're here this week. Uh, this season has been outstanding. It's a political season here in Delaware. This week has been extremely warm on the political front, especially on the gubernatorial side. Uh, some of it started right here on the agenda, so please continue to tune in. Don't miss an episode. Uh, tonight, we're going to keep it going, all right? Uh, we have our candidate, our candidate, for Lieutenant Governor for the state of Delaware, Miss Sherry Dorsey Walker. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited that you're here. Yes, um, likewise. I'm excited to be here. Uh, you're not a stranger to the show. At all. You've been on before, and, and we're, we're grateful that you're on. Uh, we, the last time we spoke was during the debates. Yes. That were about three to four weeks ago, I think, at Canaan Baptist Church. And may I say you moderated the debate very well. Thank you very much. And I mean that sincerely. You were I appreciate very fair. That. You were optimistic. <laughs> I still am. <laughs> yes, I you still are. Am. yes, you are. Yes, you are. But your your questions were fair. They were honest and truthful. And I feel like you really did a nice job making sure that the tone was set from the onset. So I'd like to say thank you for that. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And I I want to thank Canaan Baptist Church and the Urban League for doing a, a great job. What I love, before we get into all that's going on with you, I just want to say for, for those two organizations, what I love is we've done the, the gubernatorial and the lieutenant governor's debates, and both of them have almost been packed houses. Well, it speaks to the coalitions that all work together, the Coalition of 100 Black Women, 100 Black Men, the National Panhellenic Council, A. Philip Randolph, and you mentioned the Metropolitan Wilmington Urban League, Canaan Baptist Church, the Bethel AME was in the house, that's my church, and so many other, and just the fact that people decided that let's come together for such a time as this and let's learn about the different candidates. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think it's, it, it says a lot about the hunger that people want to know more about the political process because regardless of the organizations that are inviting them, mm -hmm. it still takes a willingness of a person to come and want to educate themselves on the process, educate themselves on the candidates, educate themselves on the topics and the issues, right? right. So uh, kudos to all the organizations that help get people there, but kudos to the people who have attended. And I hope that they will yes. continue to attend because there's a few more debates left and there's, there's several more throughout the city uh, and the state. So please uh, listen to these candidates, make sure that they are not flim flamming. Right. And, and while we're on this topic of being grateful okay. and saying, just saying thank you, I do want to say a special thank you to Norman Oliver for, Oliver for his third annual Black Men's Summit. I think it's a great opportunity to bring men of color together. And I thank you for this show, for your willingness to have people come on and share, and that people, could, our constituency can learn more about us. So, so often black men are not honored for the work that they do. So I just wanna say a special thank you. We appreciate that. Filled with gratitude today. Yes. I thank you, Every I thank day. you. Every day. Um, uh, Norman Oliver's event, from what I heard, this is the day after, mm -hmm. was a smashing success. Mm -hmm. um, I have uh, seen the pictures on social media today and people are, making those connections, which was the true purpose of the exactly. event. And um, hopefully they will be long lasting and lucrative for all those who took part in it. So uh, way to go, Norm, yes. and everything that he has done. Um, running for Lieutenant Governor yes. for the state of Delaware. For the state of Delaware. I need to know, they need to know, for those that did not attend okay. um, the, the debates, for those who may not have seen you on social media, for those somehow, I don't know, have missed you up and down the state <laughs> in Newcastle County and all the counties doing yes. something um, in some capacity, but tell them who you are and why 
they should vote for you? That's a, again, a very fair question. Representative Sherry Dorsey Walker, born, raised, bred, Wilmingtonian, Delawarean, native Delawarean. I served on the Wilmington City Council for a full term, and I like to tell people, if you can serve on the Wilmington City Council for a full term, you can be President of the United States of America, yes and amen. And I mean that. <laughs> you can do anything. You can do anything, because you learn. The one thing you do is you learn about the political arena as a city council yeah. member. I was about to say woman, but as a member, a city council member. I just completed my third full term as a House member. And I served on the Board of Parole. And the Lieutenant Governor has two major roles. That's to preside over the Senate and to chair the Board of Pardons. And so with my background of service, my willingness to, and my desire to bring about justice for women and our children and fighting for our schools and affordable housing and making sure our veterans are heard and seen and agriculture, which is our number one industry. I have a proven track record of working in criminal justice and all the aforementioned. I am not only the most qualified, but uniquely qualified to be the next Lieutenant Governor for the state of Delaware. And there are suitable candidates that are running as well on both sides of the party. Um, you do have a proven track record. You understand Dover, as well as the other candidates that are there are longstanding. Some of the other candidates that are there are longstanding. Um, I don't want to call them Doverites, but people who understand <laughs> what it's like and uh, and and, <laughs> like and, and have been uh, kind of tested, uh, tested the waters. It is it is become. I think it's fair to say, out of my forty six years. If I'm more than that, I know my mother's going to call in on that. <laughs> but 46 years of life, um, and for the last 30, I would say that I've been really focused on politics here in the state of Delaware. I have not seen a gubernatorial race be so down in the dirt as this one is. Would you agree? What I'd like to do is just stay focused on running for lieutenant governor so we can send people to my website, SherryDorseyWalker.com. And... I'll share with you that we, the, the lieutenant governor candidates, we sat down, we had prayer together, and we decided that we would do something different in this state. I love that. And we would not do anything that would bring harm to our families or to our communities. And if you've noticed, we've been very collegial, and we're going to continue to be collegial. It was, it, it was uh, a very peaceful debate. As it should be. It was a very peaceful debate. You cannot say that um, the people that were in attendance during that debate didn't understand the issues because there was too much rhetoric going back and forth. They left there with more information than what they came with, and it was presented in a manner in which it was well received. Yes. There was nothing about anything that you've done outside of your job that would mislead a candidate or have them or mislead a constituent, excuse me, and, and take them away from the issues at hand. My question in regards to the gubernatorial race and the way things have gone has been you as Lieutenant Governor, regardless of who wins, you're, whomever wins is going to have to work with that person. I'm asking you, Ms. Sherry Dorsey Walker, how do you intend to do that? Well, our slogan is rise to unify. So that's exactly what I shall do upon rising. I shall rise to unify. So whoever wins the race, we're going to work together for the betterment of the people of the state of Delaware. But the main thing that needs to happen is healing. And not only am I a peaceful woman, but I'm also a healer. So I shall work with whoever wins that race because it's already named and claimed for Lieutenant Governor up and down the state. And it's not being arrogant, it's being confident in the Christ I serve. But at the end of the day, we are going to need some healing within the state, within the party. And I'm willing to do that necessary work. Mm -hmm. Yes, everything that comes to us doesn't necessarily come easily. That is true. But to whom much is given, much is required. Heavy lies the weight of the crown. That there it is. Okay. 
Yes. And queens wear crowns. Wear our crowns. We do. We queens. <laughs> the queen. <You> know? <laughs> queens wear crowns. You know? Pink and green ones, too, I may add. <laughs> we will get to the shout outs <laughs> and the affiliations <laughs> towards the end of the interview. Uh, we talked a little bit um, prior to the interview about passions. And being very agnostic, I was telling you where my passion lies for the state of Delaware, and you were telling about where your pat one of your passions lies for the state of Delaware, and that was education. Absolutely. Um, I know, as Lieutenant Governor, you say that you're not saying, but you made it clear that there's two major responsibilities. There's still a plethora of responsibilities. Certainly your phone is still gonna ring every single solitary hour on the hour in regards to what's necessary to whomever is going to be Lieutenant Governor. In this conversation, we're saying you, how do you see your part in adding to the educational initiatives to the mm -hmm. state of Delaware? That's an outstanding question. The Byard School is in my district. And one of the things I've been able to do is work with the Christina School District and establish. You were able to work yes. with the Christina School District? Absolutely. Didn't I just tell you I'm a healer? That, that. <laughs> I'm a peaceful woman. <laughs> yes. And so we established an agriculture program in the Byard School. If we can have cancer clusters up and down this state, we can have healthy clusters. And so teaching our children how to grow their own food and how to be healthy and how to eat healthier is so important. Agriculture is our number one industry in the state. And so what that does is it prepares our babies for economic development, for workforce development, job creation. All of this matters and it's all encompassing when we talk about education. So how do we change our educational system? We have to be sure that we're working with people who sincerely care about our families and our children. And anyone who knows anything about me, you know I've been in the schools in Kent County, Sussex County, and Newcastle County. It's what I do. I love spending time with our children. I love spending time with our families. I'm the author of House Bill 198, Adding Black History to the State's Curriculum. I'm the author of House Bill 263, and that bill says if a child has an, excuse me, if a parent has an outstanding meal bill, then our children can't be poverty shamed in school mm -hmm. anymore, meaning they can't participate with extracurricular activities. So we stop that practice. There are so many bills that I've sponsored, House Bill 273, speech therapy, and, and compels insurance companies to cover speech therapy for our children up until the age of 18. Is that something that's not happening? It wasn't happening for middle class families. For those who have Medicaid, they were getting, they could get access to speech therapy, but for middle class families, speech therapy was not covered. And that was something that was brought to my attention on the campaign trail. Hmm. So I was able to get that bill passed with the help of my colleagues in the General Assembly. So what's important in this moment is hiring people who have a track record mm -hmm. as it pertains to making differences in the lives of others. And that's just a few things that I've done. I've done countless, I've, I've sponsored countless pieces of legislation. But so has a work. lot of your, sorry to cut you off, but uh, the other candidates that are running, they've sponsored legislation too. Why is your, why are you standing out? Because I prime sponsored the legislation. <laughs> There's a difference. You can co-sponsor or co-prime sponsor, but when you come up with the bill right. and you do the legwork that's necessary to ensure that our families have access, that's the difference maker. Right. So yes, others have done, they've done some work, but the, the work that needed to be done as far as bringing everybody to the table, I am the only one who helped children create the Delaware Black Student Coalition, which was students from as far north as Claymont to as far south as Selbyville to create House Bill 198. Our babies came to me and said, we don't see ourselves reflected in the classroom. Others can say that they've helped with something, but I am the executor. Mm -hmm. So I love the fact that, and, and you're the first candidate, I believe, candidate that we've had that's talked about curriculum. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanna be specific. If there's another candidate that has come on and, and, and talked directly about curriculum, I apologize. But to my knowledge, you're the first one that's come on and talked about curriculum. And I have to give my opinion now, okay? 
I think that the district lines that we have for Newcastle County need to be improved um, when it comes to uh, where kids are going to schools and feeder patterns and things like that. I won't draw you into that conversation, but I think that there can be some standardization. I also think there, that there can be some standardization when it comes to curriculum. I think that um, the, DOE gives the re DOE gives the recommendations, but the districts have a lot of say in regards to what information is being pushed out. Because we don't have that standardization, I think that there is a dip in our test scores. It's not just can't be all put on the, the teachers um, uh, in the classrooms. It can't all be placed on the students. It can't all be placed at home. It can't all be placed on curriculum. But what we can do is begin to knock down as many of those barriers to success as we possibly can. My question to you, is that something that your office, how closely will you work with the Department of Education to ensure that Delaware students are being thought of first? The Department of Education is near and dear to my heart because the Department of Education oversees my babies and every child in this state is my baby. So there will be, you, you will see, it'll be Lieutenant Governor Sherry Dorsey Walker, Department of Education, educators and our children because we can't create policy and not have our children have a say. And so often that's what happens in our state. We create these policies and then we say, okay, well, we want our children, this is how you're going to learn. And our children say, well, I don't really, I, I'm not learning in this model. This, mm -hmm. this isn't working for me, but I tried this over here and it actually worked for me. So why can't we have our children have a say? Why can't we? Right. Why, why, why can't we? Why right. are we, and, and this is a hypothetical, but what has happened to our school system, to our education, in not just Newcastle County, but throughout the state, we're not doing well on standardized testing for a lot of our students. We're not reading at levels that we need to. And that's not something that happened last year. This is something that has been progressively getting worse over the years. So my hypothetical question is, what the heck happened to get us to this point? My second part of that question is, what the heck do we need to do? And that doesn't mean literally blowing up school boards um, um, and firing superintendents and all this other craziness, but what is it that we need to do to unify? Mm -hmm. And what do we need to do to ensure that, because my kids are part of the Delaware school system, they're taking advantage of it. So I have skin in the game as well. Um, I want to see it better, but I still don't, what I don't see from a, from a parent standpoint, from a parent standpoint, I don't see a lot of accountability from the Department of Education. I don't see a lot of accountability from our school districts. I don't see a lot of accountability um, from our schools. No one, what I like to call, falls on the sword and says, we could have done better. Everyone likes to pass the buck. Mm. So I come to you as a politician, as someone who has passed legislation, as someone who understands curriculum and can have an educational discussion about education, excuse the redundancy in the state of Delaware, someone needs to accept responsibility. I don't think we can unify until we get to that point because once, we, once we're there, I think that that's when you begin to develop a problem statement. And once you develop that problem statement, you can begin to fix this problem because this is a fixable problem. Mm -hmm. um, there have been states, cities, municipalities all throughout the country who have turned it around. And I lived in Delaware my entire life, well, most of my life. And I know that we are a state that's capable to turn this around. So without leading the witness here, I mean, I'm, I'm just very <laughs> curious after hearing my rant for the past three to five minutes, what is your interpretation of that in regards to education? And then I wanna ask you about um, prison reform. Well, let's start with commending Dr. Darrell Green, superintendent of Red Clay Schools. Dr. Darrell Green has put together a model with his team to ensure that at their board meetings, there's a student voice. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's important. So you hear from the student body because the students have appointed someone to be a part of the school board. 
The student voice is important. Mm -hmm. The educator voice is important. And so often, even when I worked on House Bill 198, I had educators at the table, had students at the table, leadership of the Department of Education, and we all had to come to an agreement about adding black history to the state's curriculum. You have to have consensus builders. Mm -hmm. and you have to have people who really care. Mm -hmm. It can't just be, well, you know, I have a job. Mm -hmm. And most people in education, they love what they do. Let's equip them with the tools that they need so they can do it effectively. And let's step, stop blaming educators for everything that's happening in our communities. Mm -hmm. The accountability does lie with we, the people. And when I say that, what are we doing as communities to make sure that we're sending whole individuals to schools? Well, the school day stops at 4.30. What happens from 4.30 to 8.30 in the morning? Well, I don't know what school. You're, those children are attending, but most schools stop at 2.30 or 3.30. <laughs> but if they're in school till 4.30, well, bless the Lord. Because <laughs> I wish they were. <laughs> that's a good day. <laughs> I wish they were. But when we think about the criminal justice system, as you I said you would mention, from 3 to 6, those are the most critical hours for our children. And so what are we doing as a community, as a society, to ensure that our children are safe, that they're healthy, they're eating well, mm -hmm. and that they're not on the streets? So shout out to Miss Charlotte Miller Lacey at I Am My Sister's Keeper, MSK Community Center, for being open to the boys and girls clubs up and down the state. Programs that are accessible to our children and to our families, it starts there too. Making sure that we have the necessary mental health counselors that we need in the schools mm -hmm. and in the community. It's all encompassing. And so we have to work together. And I know for some people, a lot of people don't necessarily want to work together. It becomes about, well, who gets the credit? Give God the credit. We work together and then watch, watch how we shift this thing. Watch. Before I, I, I let you go, the Board of Pardons, not, excuse me, the Board of Parole, um, it's important. So I'm looking at it from a different perspective. You're probably looking at it from a very similar perspective, but for our viewers at home, know how I feel about economic development in, in our state. Um, I think that jobs, I, I've made it very clear, should be Americans first. Um, we have a, a job shortage in this country. Um, other countries from where I've traveled from where I've worked, have made it very clear that when you travel outside of this country, there is standards set for who can work and who can't. Um, so there are successful ways of doing this. That being said, nonviolent drug offenders in the state of Delaware that are being paroled. Deserve a right to work. Absolutely. They deserve a right to work. They deserve a right to live in communities. They deserve a right to affordable housing. Absolutely. And they, all these barriers that exist, we need to stop. And criminal justice reform is just that. We need to ensure that just because someone committed a crime 20, 30 years ago, they're not the same person. Some people aren't the same person five years ago. Mm -hmm. But are we going to continue to create barriers for them when they come back? We can't into society? and maintain our economic standing in this world. We cannot. And we if can we're going work to with, con continually put these barriers up for people. We can work. If a person says, this is why I was in the system, mm -hmm. then let's make sure that they don't recidivate back into the system. Mm -hmm. When I was on the board of parole, a lot of times people recidivated back into the system because they didn't have economic opportunities. That's all it takes. When someone comes home, give them an economic opportunity. Be fair. Make sure they have access to affordable housing. Make sure House Bill 267 eliminates the practice of those who are willfully paying their child support, mm -hmm. that you won't revoke the license and incarcerate them anymore. Mm -hmm. That practice was happening here in Delaware. There were individuals incarcerated for willfully paying child support. So that means if you have a $1,000 order and you're paying 900 of it, you can still go to jail for the 100. 267 eliminates that practice. And it's not to say that, oh, don't pay your child support. I'm talking about willful. 
Mm. So let's make sure that we're talking about the reunification of family for the non-custodial parent. It's those kinds of things. When we're talking about criminal justice reform, something so minute but yet so major. Mm. So ensure that people have access. And once people have access to economic opportunities, the recidivism, excuse me, the recidivism rate will decrease. Mm -hmm. It's just that simplistic. We can work with our unions, apprenticeship programs. I've done it. Mm -hmm. We can make a difference in the lives of others. Are people willing to open their arms and say, so what, you committed that crime 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. But let's make sure that we give you an opportunity over here. You can come work for X company and they'll probably be your best employee. We have a minute left. Please tell our viewers in closing again, why you feel that you're the better candidate in this upcoming election. Um, the date to go out and vote is, uh, I'm sorry, September election 10th. day, <laughs> se September 10th. I yes. lost it that September quick. 10th. September 10th. Um, please go out and register to vote. Your webpage is? SherryDorseyWalker.com. SherryDorseyWalker.com. Please uh, go out, take a look, find out more about this candidate. Find out more about all of the candidates before making a decision. Read uh, when you see uh, any of the candidates out on the street. Please go up and say hello. That's it. Say hello. Well, more importantly, we'll come up and say, I know I'll, I shall come up and say hello to you. There's not many places where they won't see you. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Every time I turn around, I look up and I see you. But thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Thank you thank for taking you. the time. I know during campaign season, it is extremely hard to make time and, and uh, get to all the events, but you did not skip us. Thank you so very much. Thanks for having me. Vote Sherry Dorsey Walker, September 10th. Thank you for tuning in as well. We appreciate it. It's been an awesome season. We look forward to seeing you next week right here on the agenda. Check us out.